Hi guys, my name's James. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Christmas tree holder out of 22mm copper pipe and a little bit of your brains. The one I've got here, I absolutely hate. The amounts of arguments I've had with my darling wife while she holds it upright and I have to twist up those little screws at the bottom and then you let go and it moves. At the end of this video, there's a very special link that I would like you to consider clicking. Let's do this and in a very festive way, remember to hold tight. Right, so I've got my usual stuff, got my soldering bag here, remember everything in this bag that I've got, including the bag itself and my tools and stuff like that down there, you can buy on our Amazon store. Now, first thing we need to do is get our fittings together, so this is what you're going to need to be able to do it. Here we go. By the way, don't have any of their power tools, but the Milwaukee Packout stuff is insane. Like the fact that I can have all my boxes easily accessible and pulled about, so you can do that. Honestly, I'm going to review this soon. It's absolutely brilliant. I haven't filled it up yet. But what you're going to need is one, two, three, four elbows. Yeah. So you're going to need about, I think, eight equal T's, 22 mil, and four end caps like this. Okay. That's what we need. Right then. So I've got myself some 22 millimeter copper pipe here. I did have a bit of sherry last night. Here comes the wife. Basically, I'm trying to put off all my Christmas jobs for as long as possible. Uh, one of my jobs today was to decorate the Christmas tree. Uh, and I said, no, don't want to do it. I don't want to have to go up in the loft and get the decorations. So when I went and bought our Christmas tree, I saw one of these lovely little stands. Bendy, bendy, bendy. Got my benders here. So let's bend our first 90 degree. We're going to need to do four of these. Uh, yeah, big up the uh, crew at Barking and Dagenham College. Went and visited them last week. <laughs> It's quite funny actually when you see apprentices try and bend pipe because they realise how completely weak they are when they try and do it with 20 mil or 22 mil like I am now. <laughs> really nice to see youngsters learning our fantastic trade um, and also just having a chat with them. And you know, one thing I did notice was the fact that loads of them don't have work site. Uh, placements, which is a bit of a shame. I just know I'm going to run out of 22 mil and I'm going to have to go to screw fix on a Sunday. They're not going to be very happy seeing me turn up, I'll tell you that. So these kids were struggling to get work based placements and they said to me, James, how do we get work based placement in the world of plumbing? How do we get someone like you or a one man band to come out there and employ us or take us on? We've sent letters. And I was like, oh God, you haven't said a letter. There's no way you're going to get an apprenticeship with a letter. So I told them my way, my tried and tested method for getting an apprenticeship is to have a dad that's a plumber. <laughs> the uh, tried and tested way, I would say, is to go to the suppliers in the morning at about 6 o'clock, 6.30, and, you, and stand on the doorstep as all the plumbers and that come in and say, look, I need an apprenticeship. I really, really want to do this for a living. You've passed the first test, haven't you? The getting out of bed test, which is, you know, a hard test to pass. Uh, and, you know, lots of plumbers. That's what we're looking for, isn't it? We're looking for someone who can get out of bed in the morning. Right, this is our last. Hopefully, I'll, let's see if we get this one right. So, we want to go at 50 and then start our bend on 18. Like that. Okay. I think a lot of them looked at me and they were like, oh yeah, that makes real sense. I said to him, if you're there every day for a week, every morning you're there, you're giving them your CV, you stood there at 6.30 out in the snow, like there is at the moment, you could do that and hopefully then someone will take you on. And then after that, don't lose your apprenticeship by going on your bloody phone all the time. By the way, I had a very strange comment on one of my YouTube videos from ages ago where I fitted a shower valve and they said, we're unsubscribing because of your sexist comment. And I was like, what? I almost did the spinal tap joke. What's wrong with being sexy? I went back and watched the video and all I talked about was male and female fittings. I don't really know what they were on about. Maybe they think there should be more than more than two types of fitting. <laughs> oh, plumber pass is getting controversial now. Hey, talking about things. What you shouldn't be talking about. Hey, we are cutting these down to size now. So we've got this little beast here built up. It's not soldered together yet, but that is what we've got. Almost looks like one of those things that holds a gimbal camera thing. Um, so yeah, what we need to do now is we've built two U pieces that look like this. This is car crash if ever there was one. So I've got two U pieces that look like this. 
what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to get these two U bits soldered up now so we're all ready to go for the next stitch. Um, little trick, if you get some olives from your local market, put your wet rag in that and it won't dry out. Yeah. All these little things make our lives slightly easier. Uh, today I'm actually going to use my homemade heat mat. Fluctuator makes fluxing. <laughs> Fluctuator makes fluxing easy. Bit of flux coming out. I don't actually use fluctuators flux in that. I actually just use Laco. Still a fan of Laco. I don't know why you move from place to place, don't you, on this sort of thing. I've used Laco for many years. I used Everflux for a while. I remember I got Everflux in my eye and I remember my apprentice literally wet himself because of the, how quickly I sprung up from where I was. And um, beeping! I just thought today it'd be a nice opportunity for us to have a bit of a chat, have a bit of a catch up. Because I have been away. I went to Tenerife, didn't I? Beautiful bit of weather out in Tenerife. Yeah, I went to Tenerife. The weather was gorgeous, 30, 33 degrees. Landed on Tuesday morning back into England. It was minus seven. And I'm one of those guys who still wears their shorts. I was like, no, it's still holiday. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Tenerife was very nice. Random plumbing, as usual. You know what I'm like when it comes to Fozza plumbing, and there was definitely some Fozza going on out there. I mean, how easy it must be to fit a toilet in Spain, because all they do when they first fix is just leave it in the wall, don't they, and then pop a flexi up to it. Nothing against that. Some people on YouTube, when it comes to comments, they just sit there and they hammer away at the keyboard. If you find it necessary to make negative comments on a channel about plumbing, that says more about your life than it does my plumbing videos. Bit of festive soldering, anyone? Little bit of sexy getting the old nib on the old bit of pipe, giving it a rub, heating the pipe up. <laughs> what else could I think of? Ow, oh, day boy. Lovely. Right, this next bit's not going to be easy, my friend. Nothing is in life. So what we got to do is we just do some bends, basically, just to 45, a 45, a 45, and a 45. And then we've got to basically mount this all up together. Uh, and I'm running out of copper. I've got not much left in the bank. Cup ton. Everybody, this was a very fiddly bit. I was getting hotter and hotter, but as you can see, the lovely fire in the background was slowly going out. But I was... <laughs> because I'd had a couple of beers with the old man the day before, I was slowly starting to get more and more grumpy with this project. I think I said to Emily a few times, Emily... I've bitten off more than I can chew here. Because every time I put it together, it kind of fell apart again. And every time I adjusted something, something fell out somewhere else. I was going to go absolutely mental. Let's get these um, soldered up. Now, this has to sit up off the ground a little bit. So later on, well, you, when you pop this over like a tub or something, you can fill this lot up with water, and then that'll keep your lovely tree hydrated. So as you can see, my homemade heat map was the perfect upstand so we could get that nice little lift. So when we finish it, we can then put a little bucket underneath to catch the water. Um, I realised that I needed to go a little bit longer here, so I thought, right, let's whap some 15mm bits of pipe up and also pop some 15mm end caps on, just to make sure we don't dig into the wood when we put the tree on. Right then, boys and girls. Now we're just going to give her a good old brass out. Spend as much time on this section as you like. Just remember, this is the most important bit. And then we'll see if it works. I'll be very interested to see if it does. I think it's going to be like almost like auto adjusting. Guys, how cool is this? Brasso is like the secret weapon for me that I've told you all about. <laughs> it's not that secret anymore, is it, eh? Right. Moment of truth. <sighs> It's actually upright and everything. Yeah. Get rid of this old beast, rusty old thing. Now I'll get myself a temporary bowl of water or something to go under there. How good is that? But you can just adjust it a little bit. How about that? Yeah, guys, look at that, doing its job. So then guys, there you go. What a brilliant project. At the click of my finger, this tree will be fully decorated and I'll be sat here with a mild wine, enjoying its festive vibe. There you go. Beautiful. I'd like to say to everybody, obviously, Happy Christmas. 
and a Happy New Year. I always get worried about saying Happy New Year now because I remember doing that between 2019 and 2020. I and mean, look how that turned out. Funnily enough as well, that new year, I had to go to bed early because I was really, really ill with some sort of weird flu. How about that? 2023 is going to be brilliant on Plumber Parts. We've got uh, quite a lot. We've got a new thing coming up on the channel. We're still gonna do all the bits and pieces with our plumbing disasters that you guys send in. We're also still gonna do our instructional videos and like new kind of products that have come out, reviews for that. We are going to be having some big YouTubers come into our studio uh, and that's gonna be part of Plumber Parts soon. So that's all I wanna say on that for now. Now this special link, if you're a fan of Lad Bible and you like long format interviews with people who've led interesting lives or done interesting things, then please click on that link and check out my channel. Channel. Already we've done interviews with a psychologist, an actor, a Ukrainian refugee. Uh, we've also interviewed David McMillan, the famous international drug smuggler, who is the only guy to have ever got out of the Bangkok Hilton. We've got interviews with Holocaust survivors coming up and also people who have escaped East Germany and were captured by the Stasi back in the 80s. Uh, I'm going to Berlin to interview them in the new year. So there's lots of mad stuff going on still. You know what I'm like, I'm always sort of bustling about either doing a bit of plumbing or a bit of filming or this and that so if you like long format interviews click on that link now check out life in deep and hit the subscribe button and watch the videos there as well please again thanks ever so much for supporting the channel through 2022 see you in 2023 i hope you stay all safe have a fantastic christmas there is going to be another plumber parts video going up before the new year hopefully we'll get a plumbing disasters out like end of year plumbing disasters but also um, there's just an instructional video that I did about pipe bending that I think would be really, really helpful. I'm rambling now, but I did a video about uh, how to fix burst pipes when they're frozen, but I haven't had a chance to get it out yet. Typical, everything's thawing now, so no one's gonna be wanting to watch that for a few weeks. Thanks for watching, see you soon, love you all, and remember, mwah, to hold tight.